Good morning and welcome to another episode of Tom's Gadget Garage. In today's video, we're going to be taking the Tenway Seago 600 Pro on a range test. Now, Tenways does say that this bike will get upwards of 53 miles on a single charge, so we'll definitely be putting that to the test today. Now, keep in mind that range estimates are exactly that. They are just estimates, and they're based off of a rider of a specific weight, riding on completely flat ground on a windless day with minimum stop and go. So in reality, what you get in range could very well be different than what the manufacturer claims. Now this bike does have three levels of pedal assist. And for today's ride, we will be riding around in pedal assist level two, which is the middle of the road. It'll give you a rough idea of what you can expect on this bike. One of the beautiful things about this bike is that it is a single speed bike. Uh, so you're gonna be looking at less maintenance over time. And of course it's got that Gates carbon belt drive system, which according to Tenways, is good for approximately 18,000 miles of riding before it needs to be replaced. When I first got this bike, one of my main concerns was gonna be around whether or not a single speed drivetrain would be sufficient for everyday riding on flat ground as well as light hills. And to my surprise, it's been absolutely fantastic. This bike does have a 60 tooth chain or belt ring as well as a 22 tooth rear sprocket. So it's very well geared for both powered and non-powered riding. And of course, for this ride, I did install this mirror, which I use on many of my bike range tests, especially when I'm riding around on roads with cars, uh, because it gives me a good idea of who's behind me, which is really important because nowadays you've got, you know, so many distracted drivers veering into bike lanes. So it's always a good idea to keep an eye on uh, who's behind you. Uh, but this mirror has worked out really well so far. I'll definitely include a link in the description if you want to pick one up for yourself. I will be tracking this ride with Garmin GPS, which is what I use for all of my rides. That way we have a consistent way of measuring range and all that fun stuff. Uh, so at the end of it, we'll see how close to that 53 mile benchmark we can get to. Now I did mention this in my previous video covering this bike, uh, but the Tenway Seago 600 Pro is equipped with a torque sensor, which is gonna be a lot more efficient than your typical cadence sensor. And what I love about torque sensors is they use a pressure-based system. So the more pressure you apply to the pedals, the more power the bike is gonna give you. And you can increase that power delivery with your levels of pedal assist. And because it operates that way, it's gonna give you a much more natural ride feel compared to a bike with a cadence sensor. And if you watch some of my previous videos, you'll know that I'm not a huge fan of uh, battery meters on bike screens. Nice thing about this bike is it does have that battery gauge, but it also gives it to you in a percentage. And you can go into the menu system and look at the voltage. Now this is a 36 volt system. Uh, so fully charged, it's 42 volts. About 50% battery remaining will be around 36 volts and 30 to 31 will pretty much be empty. So we'll be keeping a close eye on that today. All right, for those of you keeping track, we just crossed the five mile mark and we've been cruising around for approximately 22 minutes with an average speed of about 14.8 miles an hour. Today is a beautiful day. It's about 75 or so degrees out right now. We've got a little bit of a cool spell in the Phoenix Metro and uh, it's supposed to get, you know, only to 99 degrees Fahrenheit today. So for Phoenix standards, that's quite chilly. We'll see how long it lasts, at least for the next week, but absolutely perfect biking weather. One of the things that I love about, you know, September, October is we get little glimpses of cooler weather again. And then once we get to mid-October, uh, we finally lose sight of the 100 degree days. So definitely looking forward to that. As you can see, we are cruising around on hard packed dirt. You know, this bike is a, you know, commuter bike designed for riding around on roads. Uh, and it doesn't have a suspension, but so far it's handling this little gravel and dirt without a problem. All right, looks like we got some kind of running event today. So that'll give us a good opportunity to ride this bike on grass and it's handling it beautifully. All right, we are officially out of the running zone and making our way back on 
to some paved surfaces here in a moment. All right, now we've got our pedestrian bridge. It'll be a good test of this bike's hill climb ability. All right, so we are in pedal assist level two. No problem at all. Very smooth power delivery. All right, coming down the downside here will give us a good opportunity to test out the hydraulic brakes on this bike. And they are very good. All right, so we officially crossed the 10 mile mark. We've been riding around for about 44 minutes and we are cruising around according to GPS at around 18 miles an hour or approximately 17 miles an hour on the bike's trip computer. Looking at the battery gauge, it says we've got about 81% battery remaining and we've still got all of our bars. So once we get a little further into our ride, I will uh, switch over and take a look at the voltage, see how accurate the percentage readout is. Now I've mentioned it before and I'll absolutely mention it again. The torque sensor on this bike is very smooth. You don't get like a jolt of power or anything like that, like you sometimes get with some Caden sensor bikes or bikes with cheaper torque sensors. So the setup that they have on here really makes for a really natural ride feel. Now when you toggle through the menu system on this bike, it'll give you some additional stats, your average speed, your max speed, uh, the trip distance, which looks pretty accurate so far. It also gives you estimated range, and this is saying that we've got about 36 miles of range remaining. Of course, uh, we'll be putting that to the test. You know, we'll see where we're at at the halfway point when we turn around. Okay, we've got some railroad tracks up here. Clear on the left and the right. Pretty comfortable for a bike with no suspension. Uh, the tires on this bike are 700 by 45 C. Uh, so they've got, you know, some width to them for being a road style commuter bike. And uh, so far I found them to be really comfortable. They do a good job of absorbing, you know, some of these gaps uh, in the pavement here on this bike path. Uh, the seat on this bike, I am using the stock seat. On a lot of e-bikes, I like swapping uh, the seat out with a Cloud 9 seat. But so far, even though this bike seat looks super uncomfortable, it's narrow, it's relatively firm, I actually find it to be quite comfortable. Of course, that's with us at about you know 11 miles into this ride, so uh, we'll definitely see how I feel by the end of this range test. Now, there are way more people out and about than I would normally see out here. And we can thank this beautiful weather for that during the summer months you know everybody barricades themselves in their homes to escape from the heat now as you know if you've been following this channel for a while we've been out here all summer testing out bikes and scooters the whole nine yards but i'll definitely say that i really look forward to these cooler temperatures we're gonna have a lot of fun this season riding around out here on bikes and scooters. And I'll tell you what, a lot of companies are having like end of season sales right now, but I'll tell you what, here in Arizona, our season is just getting started. All right, we're gonna go ahead and take a little bit of a pit stop here. There it is, our trusty 10-way Seago 600 Pro. We're about 15 miles into this ride right now. And we've been cruising around for about an hour and four minutes. And uh, here, we've got some uh, water features on the canal. Looks like they're releasing some water. Uh, we're supposed to get some uh, stormy weather, I think, uh, potentially this weekend. So that'll be a nice change. We didn't get much in the way of uh, rain this year. But uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and drink some water and we're going to continue on the path. Okay, let's get going. I've recently started adding some of that uh, 
liquid IV electrolyte mix into my water because I'll tell you what, riding around in the heat is no joke. All right, so I don't know if you can see it in the background there, but we've got some mountains. That is South Mountain. That's normally where I take some of my e-bikes and e-scooters up for an endurance hill climb test. 17 and a half miles round trip up and down that mountain. And uh, you know, it's nine and a half miles, all three lookout points at the top. Uh, and so that's normally where I would take you know, devices that have got a lot more motor power uh, to make it to the top. We might take this bike up there, uh, but first and foremost, I do have uh, another route uh, at a hillside community that's got, you know, inclines of six to seven percent that we're gonna test this bike on. Now, depending on how well it does on that, we may very well take it up to South Mountain. All right, looks like we got a little bridge crossing here over the canal. Morning. All right. All right, people out here, we got electric bike, we've got some scooters, people out here fishing along the canal, enjoying this glorious Saturday morning. I'm gonna go ahead and stop here for a second and take a look at our voltage. So you just push and hold this mode button here. That'll take you into the menu system. And we go to battery. And our resting voltage is currently at 38.7. So 36 is halfway. Uh, and I usually uh, will turn around above halfway. So once we get to about 37 volts, we will get it turned around and head back the way we started. Uh, the uh, power meter on the screen, by the way, does say 66%. So I would say that is actually quite accurate. Uh, in terms of the battery bars on the screen, it shows that we did lose one bar. So the bars, of course, aren't as accurate. Uh, but the percentage battery readout does appear to be quite accurate. We'll see how it holds up. Got the uh, Canadian geese out here enjoying themselves around a golf. This is usually the turning around point uh, on a lot of my rides. But we're gonna go a little ways further. Looks like we got some kind of a walking event up here. Uh, you know, maybe. Uh, I'll turn around and... Oh, you know what? There's a... Uh, dirt path on the left hand side we'll go ahead and take that that way we don't interfere with this uh, walking event here but yeah overall i mean this bike does a pretty decent job riding around on hard packed dirt you know, definitely wouldn't recommend taking this like off-road onto like rutted roads or, you know, really bumpy roads or anything like that. It's really designed as a city commuter bike, but if you've got these hard packed dirt trails, this handles it beautifully. All right, I went ahead and got us turned around because, you know, this uh, canal path, that goes a little ways further in that direction, but then it starts going into residential areas and we lose the bike path and, Anyways, I'd prefer to stick to the bike paths today for the sake of consistency with these range tests. Let's uh, slow down here. I think you have to come to a complete stop uh, to go into the settings menu. It looks like they don't want you fiddling around <laughs> with this uh, while you're riding. Okay, 38.3 volts. So, you know, we've got another mile or so to, the, to where I would normally turn around, but, you know, we'll make up for the distance. Uh, with some detours on the way back. All right, so for all of you keeping track, we just crossed the 20 mile mark and we've been riding for about an hour and 26 minutes with about 60% battery remaining. Now, if you're looking for an e-bike that's got, you know, more of a natural riding feel that you can get some fitness out of, get your heart rate up if you want to, you know, that's overall very enjoyable to ride, this 10-way Seago 600 Pro uh, definitely delivers on those fronts. Uh, so I've been really impressed with this bike. 
you know, of course, we're going to have our hill climb test. We're going to, you know, cruise around, go to some coffee shops and, you know, I'll culminate all of this into a full end to end review. You know, once we got, you know, four or 500 miles on this bike. Now I did mention taking some detours on the way back. That's exactly what we're going to do here. Looks like we've got a little path around the golf course here. So uh, yeah, we'll see where this takes us. All right, looks like we got more protection from the uh, golf balls here. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, nice little shady area. All right, went ahead and got turned around. Now we'll head back to where we started. All right, taking a little bit of a pit stop here. Get some hydration. And we will continue along the path. All right. Looks like we've got some folks on some kind of funny looking bikes up ahead. Oh, that's interesting. Those bikes look kind of like a, some kind of an elliptical. So they were getting an elliptical exercise on some kind of bike looking device. That's interesting. I haven't seen one of those before. Well, there's a little waterfall here on the canal again. Lots and lots of water coming through there. <clears throat> but yeah, so far I'm really impressed with this bike. It's a bike that, you know, you go out and you ride and then you park it, you come inside and you find yourself wanting to go out and ride again. You know, it mixes in the perfect amount of fitness uh, with just the right amount of adventure. And, you know, cruising around on an e-bike, you know, you're able to go, all else being equal, a lot farther than you normally would, you know, for your average person riding a non-powered bike. So it definitely gives you the opportunity to get out there and explore the world around you. You know, I've, I've said it before, I'll say it again. You know, before this, I never really got outside much, except for when I was training to run my marathon. And uh, as soon as I finished that, you know, my training kind of fell off and, you know, post-marathon blues. And, you know, I did a lot of sitting on the couch watching Netflix. You know, obviously my wife and daughter and dog are always keeping me busy. But, you know, before I got into, you know, creating this channel on e-bikes and e-scooters, I spent a lot of times indoors, you know, and... It's really nice to be able to get out there and explore new places. We've officially crossed the 25 mile mark on this ride. And we've been riding for about an hour and 50 minutes. I uh, got about 48% battery remaining right now. And I will say that the percentage readout on the battery bar is very accurate. It's spot on to voltage. So we'll see if it holds, but so far, you know, if you're gonna be riding around on this bike, use the percent meter so i don't know how good the audio is right now but if you listen really quietly try and hear the motor and chances are you might not even be able to hear it and that's because the motor on this bike is whisper quiet it's 350 watts yet you can hardly hear the thing and you know that's one thing that i love about this style of bike is that it feels like riding a normal non-powered bike the difference is, is if you want to, you know, use some level of pedal assist and get that superhuman leg feeling, you absolutely can. Here's our pedestrian bridge. We're going to go ahead and give this a shot. We're at about 37% battery remaining. And we will take a slow approach to the pedestrian bridge and we'll start pedaling in pedal assist level two morning so pedal assist level two still very easy if i bump it into level three we've got a lot more power so definitely got power in reserve if you need it all right dialing it back down to level two and another opportunity to test out our tectro hydraulic brakes Solid. 
absolutely solid braking power. And we've officially crossed the 30 mile mark. We've been riding for about two hours, 10 minutes, and our battery meter is reading approximately 34% battery remaining. So making good progress here. All right, back off the beaten path. So we're still cruising along here. Got a beautiful horse out here, enjoying the fabulous weather. All right, folks, so we've officially crossed the 35 mile mark. We've been riding for two hours, 32 minutes, and we've got about 17% remaining in this battery. So we are on the final fifth of the battery right now. Uh, so we'll see how much farther we can go until we run out of juice. And I'll tell you what, this single speed on this bike doesn't phase me at all. Uh, at no point during this ride did I think to myself, oh wow, it would have been nice to have some extra gears right now. They definitely got it right with the gearing and the carbon belt drive system on this bike. So we are back on the road now. And that's where this mirror comes in handy. Keep an eye out on what's behind us and who's about to pass us and how close. Looking at uh, the battery meter about 13%. So I think we timed this pretty well. Uh, you know, just over 36 miles right now. So let's see if we can get to that uh, 40 mile mark. Now, once we run out of power, I will ride around a little bit. Uh, you know, just me doing 100% of the work to kind of give you an idea of how fast we can pedal without any kind of pedal assistance. But of course, we'll wait until uh, we drain this thing. Currently at 10% battery remaining, and we're approaching 37 miles. You know, one thing I will say is that when you get down to about this 10 to 15% mark on this battery, you definitely feel a reduction in power output. So you're doing just a little more work than you would, you know, when you're at 50% battery, 100% battery. And so that's normal, that's caused uh, by voltage sag. So as you wear that battery down, voltage goes down. And so you're gonna get less power output, but it's still very comfortable to ride and pedal assist too. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and bleed off a little more mileage here, because I think we're just ahead of schedule here. So we'll go to the end of this, we'll get turned around. And then we should have, you know, another mile and a half or so in the tank before we get to zero. This is a great bike. If you want to get out there, get a little bit of a workout in. You know, there's no throttle on this bike. So it is built, it is designed around pedaling and it makes you want to pedal in a very enjoyable way uh, because it's got very smooth operation. Uh, you can hardly tell the motor is even there because it's so quiet. Just gives you that feeling that you've got superhuman legs and you're able to cross much larger distances than you might otherwise have been able to. So kudos to Tenways on this 600 Pro because uh, so far it's been a very enjoyable bike to ride. And I really look forward to putting hundreds, if not thousands of miles on this bike. And just so you know, once you get to about 5% battery bar, four to 5% battery bar, the battery indicator starts blinking at you. No sounds at all. It's just that battery indicator has no bars in it and it's currently flashing on the screen. We've got about 2% remaining in the tank. Looks like we've officially crossed the 40 mile mark on this ride. We've been riding for approximately two hours, 53 minutes. Our battery status indicator is now showing 0%. The battery bar is still blinking and we do have some power delivery remaining. Although you can definitely feel that the power has dropped off considerably. So in a moment here, I think we're going to call this ride. So I'll just give it another few hundred yards here to see how this power output looks like. All right. Turn onto this gravel road. We will cross this farm field. And then we'll be back onto a paved service. 
when I go into pedal assist level three, there's not much there, not much change in two, not much change in one, and no change with zero. So there you have it, folks. I think we've got our range test. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, stop over there on the paved surface and we'll take a look at our stats see how we ended up now if you're curious what it's like to pedal this bike with no power it does take a little bit of input from you to get it going but uh, here we go no power at all a little bit of effort to get it going but as you pick up speed things get easier and the bike is on but no power to the motor we're just leaving it on for the speedometer here and right now very comfortable riding pace we're cruising around at about 11 12 miles an hour. All right, folks, so there you have it. That was our range test with the 10 Ways Seago 600 Pro. On this ride, we hit 40.39 miles with an average moving speed of 15.2 miles an hour. We hit a top speed of 20.5 miles an hour, and we were riding for approximately two hours, 55 minutes, uh, with a total elevation gain of 381 feet. And of course, my average heart rate is 141 beats per minute, uh, which definitely picked up towards the end of this ride uh, as we saw the power kind of wane towards the end of the battery. So overall, 40 miles of real world range with a 203, 204 pound rider on this bike. Uh, they do claim 53 miles of real world range. So if we did ride in pedal assist one, we would have absolutely been able to squeeze out more range. So once again, thank you to 10 ways for sending this over for review purposes. We do have a whole slew of tests in the pipeline. And let me know in the comments below if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, concerns, happy to answer them. And as always, thank you so much for tuning into Tom's Gadget Garage. We'll see you next time.